Like my friend Bodie Elfman, he always teases me and he says, Hi, my name is Danny Masterson. Would you like to touch my balls? <laughs> you know, doing now, an imitation of me. Because certain so words you just can't get away why are you asking people with. to do that? That's the more important question. I mean, you got them. Yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? Accent aside. Everybody should grab. That's the more important thing. Exactly. Um, I've heard about you. Uh, and you'll be caught soon. I know you will. I will. I hate to break it to you, but Danny Masterson is not going to do 30 years in prison. He's either going to win on an appeal and go home, or he might possibly take his own life because of the, just the, the amount of pressure that's going to be on him from doing 30 years. Now, I know people are wondering if he's going to get raped in prison as payback, if he's going to get extorted in prison, or if he's going to get beat up in prison, or any type of similar questions. Now, all of these scenarios are possible, and the likelihood of each, well, it honestly, it truly varies. Now, even though the government has an obligation to not engage in cruel and unusual punishment, according to the Fourth Amendment, as we know, um, the prison and everybody working in the prison will not be able to protect Danny Masterson. If you don't believe me, go back and watch the other video that I did concerning you. To have somebody like Danny Masterson doing 30 years in prison might be too much for him. But given the fact that, you know, he's a celebrity and, you know, he probably has some money, you know, I would imagine that he might get out on uh, on appeal because we know his case, it has bounced back and forth. So we'll see what happens. But we're going to talk about what it's going to be like for him when he first arrives at prison. And it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be nice, and I'm just going to warn you, if you have children around or whatever, don't have them around as I describe what it's going to be like for him as he goes to prison, because it's it's going to be a rude awakening for him, especially for a celebrity like him that's used to probably getting on the phone and having whatever he wants to have or living whatever lifestyle he wants to live. He is going to feel violated. He is going to feel humiliated. But hey, that's the price you pay when you go to prison. Now, let me just say this part real quick. A lot of people think that Danny Masterson's life is over because he got his 30-year sentence. But I can assure you that it does not mean that his life is over. With me working in the prison over the years, I have seen countless inmates that do what's called post-conviction work or appealing your, you know what I'm saying, your trial decision. So I'm sure that, you know, he's going to be working on an appeal with his attorneys. And the good thing for him is it's a state case right now. If he was fighting this case in federal court, I mean, he would be spending a gang of money. And I mean that probably off the top just to retain a federal uh, um, attorney. It's probably looking at probably six figures, probably. So with the state case, it's not going to be as difficult to fight if it was in federal court. So that's a good benefit for him. But yeah, just know he's going to appeal this. And there could be a chance or a good chance that he might win his appeal and he might get out. But let's talk about the uncomfortable stuff that he's going to deal with when he arrives in prison. Now, I forgot to do my disclaimer. So I'm an idiot and I'm an idiot in law school. So anything and everything that I talk about in this video, it is of my own opinion. And I do not speak for any government entity in whole or in part. Why, kids? Because I'm an idiot. Yay! All right. So let's get into it. So when Danny first arrives at prison, right, um, that's where the humiliation is going to start for him because I don't think he's ever been through this before. So once you arrive to prison, you're going to go through processing. You're going to be given a number. That's your inmate number. You're going to need to eat it, breathe it, sleep it, know it, because that's how they're going to identify you while you're in prison. Now, <clears throat> here's the part where it's going to get um, uh, pretty uh, descriptive. So if you have any kids around, don't, don't have them listen to this part. So part of going to prison is you have to go through a strip search. And when I say a strip search, I don't mean just strip down to your underwear. I mean, you are going to have to strip everything, all articles of clothing, your underwear, your boxers, your t-shirts, whatever it is. And you are going to have to be butt naked like the good Lord made you when you first came out of your mother. That's what you're going to look like, right? So they're going to check every part of his body, every inch of his body, they are going to check. So part of those checks, it is going to be, I, I don't mean to sound vulgar, but it's going to be his nutsack, also known as the scrotum. Um, and it's going to be um, his penis, you know, and it's also going to be 
his uh, his rectum, anus, butthole, whatever you want to call it, they're going to check it. Now, I'm going to explain how descriptive this is going to have to be for him. He is going to have complete strangers. They're going to be men because it's going to be same sex, right? So it's going to be men that he probably never met in his life and who knows how many men it will be, but he is going to strip down butt naked and then they're going to tell him, grab your penis, pull the skin back from the tip of your penis and expose all of that stuff, right? Because with the foreskin or that extra skin that hangs over, you can hide contraband in there. So not only is he going to have to slide the um, uh, foreskin or slide you know, the extra skin that's over his penis to expose that, he's also going to have to lift his scrotum or also known as nutsack, and he is going to have to move it around and he's going to have to show both sides up and down, left and right, to make sure that he doesn't have any contraband. Now, I know some people are going to say this is so intrusive. This is just crazy. Why do they do this? Our justice system, yada, yada. Well, um, you guys that don't work in the prison, you may not understand, but there are a lot of drugs that can be smuggled in through ingenious ways, especially, you know, your butt. Now, we're going to get to the butt. So now, while he's there, right, he just had to show pull back the foreskin on his penis. He just had to lift up his nutsack and show it to these complete strangers, right? And here's the crazy part. After you perform all this stuff, you know, it's not like you're leaving money on the table or anything. And just so you know, that was a joke, but I bing. So after he does that, now we're going to move on to, you know, his butt. So now he is going to have to bend forward at the waist and he is going to have to take both of his hands and he is going to have to spread his butt cheeks, his buttocks. I'm not making this up. I'm not lying to you guys. I'm sure some of you guys are like freaked out. Some of you guys are probably throwing up in your mouth or whatever it may be. But yes, he's going to have to uh, lean forward at the waist. He's going to have to spread his cheeks with both of his hands. And we're going to have to look to make sure that there's nothing inside of his butthole. I don't know how else to explain it nothing inside of his butt, you know, anus. I don't know what the proper term, I guess you can say anus or uh, rectum, whatever it is, right? He's going to have to show that. And then after that, then he's going to have to squat and he's going to have to cough several times. Now, the purpose of that is to ensure again, that there is no contraband that he might have um, inside of his rectum. And trust me, you can stuff knives in there. You can stuff cell phones in there. You can stuff paperwork in there, little kites, you know, wheelers where they transmit information from one institution to the another. You can stuff drugs in there. There are so many things. It's also known as your prison purse, right? That's a slang term. Or, you know, you have to keister it, whatever term you want to use. But there are a lot of illegal um, items that can be carried in the rectum. So let's to recap, right? Here it goes. Danny Masterson arrived in prison. He's standing in front of these officers, these male officers that he's never met. Now he has to expose his genitalia, pull the foreskin back on his penis, show that, show his nutsack. And then he has to lean forward at the waist and he has to spread his butt cheeks and show inside. Now, let me tell you this quick story. Now, some of you might throw up in your mouth, but, you know, this needs to be said because a lot of people, they want to get into corrections, but they don't know what the real deal is. And I told you, I'm going to give you all a realistic scope of what it's like. Being a CO is not all about running and tackling people and, and doing all that kind of stuff. You're going to have to do some nasty things. So part of it is it has to be officers that do these checks. So I remember one time several years ago, we had to strip search an inmate for security reasons, right? And so we strip searched him. So it came to the part to where he had to, you know, spread his cheeks and cough and all that stuff. And what I'm going to tell you, I kid you not. I put this on everything that I love. You guys know when you eat, uh, not eat, when you um, use the uh, whole roll of toilet paper and the only thing that you have left is that little brown tube, you know, the little brown tube, right? When all the toilet paper is gone. Well, this inmate, we had to order him to, you know, lean forward, spread his cheeks, and we had to check, you know, the anal cavity. I kid you not. His, the hole in his behind was so big that you literally could have taken that brown tube 
from the toilet paper and you could have just took it and set it in his behind hole. I kid you not. Now, I know some people are probably saying, oh, that means he's gay. No, that not necessarily. You know what I'm saying? That's I'm telling you, there is a lot of stuff that is transported throughout prisons using you know, your anal cavity. You know what I'm saying? But I kid you, I almost threw up in my mouth when I seen that. But again, I'm going to give you all the real deal Holyfield from the perspective of staff. You know what I'm saying? And let's say if you're doing visiting or whatever, you know, you got to strip search them. You got to check them to make sure they don't have nothing or they're passing things. So you can have a whole shift to where your only job is to do strip searches. Or when people come in the prison, that could be your job. You know what I'm saying? And some people, they don't wash their behind. You know what I'm saying? They don't take care of themselves hygiene wise. So it is so many things, but just trust me, this dude, Danny Masterson, he is going to be in for probably the biggest wake up call of his life because the life that he knew and that he was able to enjoy and live, that is no more. He is not going to have a reasonable expectation to privacy. You know what I'm saying? On the streets where he was a private citizen. Now, he still has rights as an inmate. Just make that clear. However, it is not the same as a person that's on the street. So after he gets done with this uh, super duper invasive search, then he's going to get his clothing and all that stuff. They're going to assign him to where he's going to go temporarily to determine, you know what I'm saying, where he's going to do his time. But it's more than likely sure, right? He's not going to do his time on a general population yard because of the crimes that he has, right? He's been convicted of rape, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, child molesters, you know, rapists, snitches, things of that nature, you know, in the prison world, they're despised. So they have to be in a different set of, um, they have to be in a different part of the prison or a separate prison altogether. So for him, you know what I'm saying? Normal prison politics, it wouldn't apply because normally I would imagine, okay, he's white. So let's say if he wasn't in for rape and it was something like murder or whatever, he would have to click up with the white boys and they would go from there. But with him being a celebrity and then with his crime, you know, who knows how the prison is going to uh, conduct this. But just know, I don't care what the Eighth Amendment says in terms of cruel and unusual punishment. I don't care what the uh, website says, you know, the, the prison website talking about safe and humane treatment of him. I don't care about any of that stuff. Just know wherever Danny Masterson goes, nobody can guarantee, nobody can even reasonably guarantee that he is going to be safe. Nobody. It's just, there's no way that prison staff can do that. Just the numbers and the way the operation is set up, it is just stacked against the COs. There's just no way. And go back and watch the video. I'll actually put the link of the video I did um, in the description of this video where I talked about how you're not safe in prison. Nobody is safe from prison. It, it includes the staff members. Nobody is safe. Now, let's get back to Danny, right? So after he goes through that humiliating process, and I know there's going to be some rape victims that are watching that, and they were probably salivating at the mouth. Oh, well, now he'll get to see what it feels like to be violated and yada, yada. You know, hey, you are entitled to your opinion. I'm not going to weigh in on that part, but I know there's probably some people that say, hey, that's payback. Now, is it a chance that Danny could be raped while he's in prison? Yes, there's always a chance that it can happen. But then you start getting into the likelihood of it. And um, I, I can't really give you a solid answer of if it will or will not happen. I can say that there is a possibility that it can happen, but I couldn't get into percentages and all that stuff because I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It'll still be determined how they're going to house, you know what I'm saying, Danny. I don't know. Um, obviously, you know, he's not going to go on a GP yard, but wherever he goes, he's going to still run the risk of being extorted. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be uh, running the risk of being taken advantage of, things of that nature, because when they see him, they're going to see dollar signs. So it could be, you know what I'm saying, strategy, right? They may not try to beat him up per se, but they're going to shake him down. They're going to say, hey, if you want to be on this yard, even if it's not a GP yard, even if it's a dropout yard or whatever, you know what I'm saying? You still have that predatory nature. You're still in a shark tank no matter what. And some people have it twisted. They think, you know what I'm saying, the only predators, the only sharks, you know, the only villains, they're on a general population yard. 
But that's not true. And again, that goes into you can't guarantee anybody's safety. So even once this dude goes to a yard that's supposed to be safe for him, he's still not safe. He can still be uh, susceptible to being raped. He can still be susceptible to uh, being shaken down, meaning extortion, that he would have to pay money to walk that yard, all that type of stuff. And it just, it is what it is. And that's why I say, I don't care what the Eighth Amendment says about cruel and unusual punishment. And I don't care what, you know what I'm saying, the mission statement is about the prison. I don't care if the website has people holding hands and saying, you know, we love the inmates and we're going to take, take care of them. Can't nobody make you safe or can't nobody guarantee or reasonably be assured that they're going to be safe. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> Danny is going to be in for a rude awakening. Now, I don't know how long he's going to be in prison, right? In my opinion, he's either going to eventually get out on appeal or he might most likely or possibly take his own life. Because let's be honest, for somebody of his caliber, being in Hollywood, having access to money, I'm assuming drugs, I'm assuming women, all that stuff, it's going to be a totally different story. Now, on the flip side, right, because I, I got to keep it real, right? Now, while he's locked up, there could be a chance that he might be able to compromise some staff that's in the prison. You know what I'm saying? He might try to use his little star power or, you know, wink at somebody or maybe say, hey, man, you do this for me. You know, I'll, I'll slide you some money or whatever. That can happen. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to get on. I'm not going to get on here and, and just make it seem like it, it's uh, all his all the things that could be negative for him. It could be a positive thing for him. He could get in there and he could be on a yard where he might not really be bothered. Maybe he could pay to walk that yard because he's paying for protection. And in the meantime, you know, he could be paying COs or, you know, what I'm saying other free staff or whatever that might be trying to uh, uh, make his time more comfortable by, you know, bringing him candy, some food, you know, DVD, whatever it is, right? So let's just keep it real. We we watch the news, you know what I'm saying? You read the newspapers all across the country. You hear about how prison um, staff members are even in jail, you know what I'm saying? They get caught up in things and it is what it is. So you never know. So during the time that he is locked up, he could either be doing the most miserable time of his life or he could be doing, you know, excellent I don't know. Um, Mike Tyson did an interview and he said it several times, but he was for him. Right. And he was like those years that he was in prison was the best time of his life because he was clapping those cheeks with his teacher, I believe it was. And so here it is. You got this dude. The guards were bringing him all kind of stuff that he shouldn't have. He was having sex with at least one of the female officers or staff members that was there. And so he enjoyed his time there. So it's possible that Danny Masterson can maybe enjoy his time. No, who knows? And if anybody gets on YouTube and they say for a fact they know what's going to happen, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, you really don't know. You know what I'm saying? You just never know. I'm just laying out what some of the realistic possibilities could be. Now, um, visits will probably be very interesting, <clears throat> whatever prison he goes to. Um, yeah, you have mail, you know what I'm saying? You could do the snail mail where I'm sure a lot of fans will probably write him and he'll be getting all kinds of letters from different women and, you know, the staff that have to check the mail and all that stuff, they're probably going to be bombarded with so much. So the funny thing is, you know, the staff that run the prisons, right? They got to, you know, watch out for the drugs that's coming in. So now you're going to have all this fan mail from women from all over the world that's going to be writing him because now he's this bad guy. And for whatever reason, you know, women love bad guys, right? So they're going to be writing him, things of that nature. So that's going to be a lot. As far as food goes, if he does have money, he won't have to eat the prison food. You know, I know there, there's inmates that have money or they have means or connections or whatever. You have some of them, they don't eat the prison food. You know what I'm saying? They have um, the food made for them because you have people in prison. That's their hustle. They'll steal food from the kitchen or they may buy the ingredients, you know what I'm saying, whatever. And they whip up these different prison masterpieces and, you know, they sell that, you know. And I would say outside of drugs and I guess probably gambling, the next best seller would be uh, selling food. So um, it's going to be a different experience for him. But one thing I can definitely say is don't get too excited just because he was given that 30 year sentence because he has the right to appeal his case. 
And I didn't follow his case too close, so I can't really expound on that at all. And I'm not a lawyer anyways, so I would not provide some type of legit legal analysis. But I do know that there was some type of back and forth with his case. I think he had a mistrial or a mistrial was declared and um, some other issues that was going on. So you never know what type of procedural issues might have took place that his legal team will be able to capitalize on because that's what it's about, right? And trust me, in prison, you see inmates all the time, right? They're going over their cases. These things are wrong. That was wrong. They didn't follow this procedure. You know, they violated this, violated that, whatever it is, right? And I know he's also being sued in uh, civil court as well. <clears throat> so just to wrap things up so I don't go too far in it, um, <clears throat> it's hard to say how Danny is going to do his time while he's in there, but it can range from it'll be the worst time of his life all the way. I won't say the best time of his life, but it can range from the worst time of his life to, hey, you know, this is not so bad. I'm making the best of it because don't forget he's a celebrity. So he might be able to have money still or he might be able to get some people that can, you know, take care of him, look out for him. And money can go a long way in prison. It, uh, unfortunately, it can. You know what I'm saying? He could end up like Mike Tyson. You know, y'all can go back and go on YouTube and find the different videos that he did. You know, he said he was living like a king in there. Now, obviously, Mike Tyson was a beast and, you know, he was a different caliber individual. But still, it was his um, celebrity power. It was the money that he had that was able to open those doors for him. So in the same way, it could be possible. But I definitely know I, he's not, I, I cannot see him walking a GPR just based on his charges, not necessarily because he's a celebrity per se, but just his charges, you know, for rape, you know, so in prison among the inmates, you know, that's no good. Um, you, you can't have that type of stuff on your jacket and walk a main line. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. So for anybody that's wondering what his time is going to be like, it is going to be very interesting to say the least, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to go into specifics about you know, a lot of the other stuff, but I just kind of wanted to provide just the basics. When he first gets there, it's going to be a rude awakening because if you've never been in the system and you're told, you know, in front of a few officers or whatever, take all your clothes off, get butt naked, you know, bend over, spread your cheeks, lift up your nutsack, all that type of stuff, that can be traumatizing. Now for convicts, they know what time it is. That's just like, you know, that's normal for them. You know, it doesn't traumatize them more. They're they're used to it. But for somebody like him, that's going to be um, that's going to be very, very difficult. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, this is this is definitely interesting. And I, I do want to see how this is going to play out. I would definitely be curious to see where will he end up doing his time. And and again, I know a lot of people might, you know, they want to have me say, oh, yeah, he's going to get raped. You know, they're going to pound him in the rear end and they're going to stab him to death. And you know, could that be a possibility? Sure, it could be a possibility. But, you know, the likelihood of it or the percentages that it might happen, that's where nobody really knows. You know what I'm saying? You just really don't know because money talks. You know what I'm saying? Money talks in prison. You know what I'm saying? So, um, again, I, I just want to give you my own fair and balanced opinion of, you know what I'm saying, what he might be expecting to deal with, how he's going to go in. You know, that is definitely humiliating. That's where the uh, humiliation starts, especially for somebody that's never done time. You know what I mean? So hopefully you got some edification out of this video um, to the victims that, um, you know, are out there. Um, this video was not to make light at all of what you've been through. You know, I don't even want to, you know, touch on that too much because I don't want to take away from the experiences that they had. I'm not trying to downplay any of that stuff. And I'm not trying to do this video to make it seem like what he did is no big deal or to make it seem like, you know, he's just going to get out and everything is going to be fine. So I just want to, and I know there's a lot of other rape victims out there that's been through a lot. You know what I'm saying? And my heart goes out to y'all and that's all jokes aside, just keeping it real. You know what I'm saying? Cause nobody wants to go through that. Now, one day I might do a video about, you know, people being raped in prison because um, it, it can be no matter who you are, you know what I'm saying? It could be a very traumatic, not can be, it will most likely be a very traumatic experience that you're never going to forget. You don't know how that's going to spar you and how that's going to manifest 
you know what I'm saying, in terms of health issues, all those different things. So I just want to make it clear, you know what I'm saying, that my condolences to, you know, the, the victims in this situation and all other people across the world that might be watching this video, you know, rape is never okay. It's never cool. And if there is any, um, uh, I don't know if there's any type of thing that I can say, right. When it comes to prison rapists, they are definitely despised because the men inside, I know it sounds crazy, you know, because, you know, here it is criminals that have morals and standards, but you know, the people that are doing time, they have mothers, they have daughters, they have aunties, they have, you know, good female friends. They don't want none of their people to be violated in that way. You know what I'm saying? So again, you know, my heart goes out to the rape victims and um, I definitely, you know, you'll be in my prayers and just whoever has encountered that. And you can't forget about the silent victims because there are a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? Whether it be male or female, you know, that um, they get raped and they keep their mouths shut for various reasons and they have to suffer in silence and they have to deal with that inner turmoil. And I just can't imagine, you know, going through something like that. So uh, definitely, man, if you guys know anybody that's in that situation, you know, say a prayer for them, do what you can to be there for them. Cause that it's a, it's a serious thing, man. So until the next video, holla at your boy.